Hi, it's Martin Pahiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today I'm going to talk about the non-destructive workflow and a couple of useful techniques associated with this. I'm sure you heard this term from me several times, work non-destructively, and this is a big, big topic again in Photoshop, but I just would like to wrap up the most important features in this tutorial, just quickly. First of all, what are the main features that you need to learn if you want to work non-destructively and save a lot of time? These are the main features, masking, adjustment layers, and working on layers in general, and using smart objects. In this example, I just want to show you if you use these features together, you can achieve a really flexible workflow where you can change around everything easily. So as you can see, for example, on this layer here, I have a mask, black hides, white shows. If I want to show you that original layer, I can shift click on the mask. That was the original background of this photograph. And then if I shift click on the mask again, you can see all my changes, the background and the gun and so on and so forth. So masking is definitely important. Instead of deleting images or parts of an image, you should always use masking. Now what I use for masking is a custom keyboard shortcut, but you can achieve it really easily if you want to use that. So let's just say I want to use only a specific part of the background layer. So I'm going to select only that layer by Alt or Option clicking on the eye icon. I will show only that layer in the background. Ground. And let's just say I don't need this part where we see the lamppost. So I'm going to uh, make a selection. Okay. And let's say I, I don't want to use this part. So what I'm going to do now is go to the layer menu, layer mask, and I can choose these options here. And I can say hide selection. So if I click on that, Photoshop will create a mask and will hide that part of my selection or that part of my layer. Now if I turn back on all the other layers by Alt or Option, click on the eye icon again, as you can see, we hid that part of the layer. But if I use the brush tool and I make it a bit bigger and I use white as my uh, color, drawing color, I can always draw it back. So that's the main advantage of working with masks, that you can always show it or hide it again with the black, I can hide, with white, I can show. So using the brush tool is just simple to see how flexible it is when you work with masks. The other great non-destructive feature is using adjustment layers. So in this case, if I want to turn this image into black and white, I just simply select this icon here under the adjustments panel, and that will create a black and white layer. Here I can play with these features. For example, I can add the tint and that will turn the whole image into like this sepia color. And then I can also play with the blend mode of the, that adjustment layer. So for example, we can use an overlay effect or a soft light effect and so on and so forth. So after this, it's up to you how you use these adjustment layers, but they definitely uh, can change a lot on your overall image. And instead of doing this destructively, you can do this completely non-destructively by using the adjustment layers. Now the third big category is using smart objects. As you can see the gun, which is here in his hands, and also on the reflection on the uh, car, is a smart object. So I can turn it on and off. And as you can see, it has that smart object icon. If I double click on the thumbnail, you can actually see that this is a much higher resolution image, but because I had to resize it for the other main image, I saved it as a smart object and then I resized it. Because then if I here in this image, let's say the whole image, uh, this original image, I resize for print, for example, and I increase the height, let's say to 5000 and I click on OK. Then if I zoom closer, you will see that everything in the image loses the quality 
apart from the gun, because the gun was originally much higher resolution, and thanks to saving it as a smart object, it will be completely non-destructive. If you want to learn more about these features, in my basic series I cover them in more depth. Here I just wanted to wrap them up in one tutorial, so you can see easily what you need to learn about. And there is one more thing I wanted to share with you, and that's how to use the dodge and the burn tool non-destructively. Very easy way and technique, just create a new layer, fill that la layer with 50% uh, gray, which is shift backspace, and choose use 50% gray, okay? And then change the blend mode to overlay or soft light one of these two, I'm going to use overlay, and then just simply use your burn and dodge tools, or you can even use the brush tool with dark, uh, like black and white colors. But I prefer to use the burn and dodge tool, so I'm going to use the burn tool, and with that, if I, for example, burn the edges, I can easily add something like a vignetting effect here in the corners, at the bottom we don't really need it maybe, here a bit we can darken the ground, okay? If I continue doing it, you can see we can burn it even further. And if I want to get the center of attention here in the main character, we can just use the dodge tool, make that a bit bigger and just draw over the main character to have a bit more light on him. Now, once again, completely non-destructive. If I turn this layer off, you can see we have everything completely untouched. So all the light changes are on a separate layer. So let's see, without and with. So once again, we just wrapped up the most important non-destructive features, masking, adjustment layers, smart objects, and working on separate layers. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will join me next time as well. Thanks a lot for your attention.